Hello, my name is Dr. Chad Zataslo. I'm a fellow of the American Society of Ophthalmic Plastics and Reconstructive Surgeons and the American Academy of Ophthalmology. I specialize exclusively in plastics, reconstructive, and cosmetic surgery of the eyelids, surrounding tissue of the upper face, in addition to ophthalmology. How does Bell's palsy and facial nerve palsy affect the upper face? With Bell's or another seven nerve palsy, the brow often falls. The descent of the brow is referred to as brow ptosis. When the brow falls, the eyelid skin can appear redundant and interfere with the field of vision. In addition, the brow and forehead can often feel heavy if the function of the forehead muscle does not recover. In these cases, surgical repair may be an option. The upper face is a single unit with three components, brow height, skin redundancy, and eyelid height. In order to rehabilitate the upper face, each component needs to be addressed and repaired if necessary. If one component is neglected, the result will be unsatisfactory. Creating a treatment plan is the art and science of being a doctor. Not every patient will benefit from every treatment, and some treatments may lead to an additional damage in certain cases. This video is not a substitute for medical care and is not intended to guide your medical treatment, but only to act as a source of information. Component one is the brow. Lifting a brow on a patient with Bell's palsy or a seven nerve palsy often increases facial symmetry and improves the superior and lateral visual fields. There are many techniques for elevating a brow. The method a surgeon deems best for a patient will depend on factors such as hairline, gender, skin type, and severity of brow ptosis. The second component is the upper eyelid skin. Usually when the brow has fallen, the upper eyelid skin appears redundant and folds upon itself. If the ocular surface is healthy under microscopic evaluation and the patient is asymptomatic and not tearing, the patient may consider combining an upper lip blepharoplasty or eye lift with a brow lift. This can be a high risk surgery if the patient has a poor blink and an unhealthy ocular surface. The third component is the height of the eyelid. An upper eyelid that appears to be drooping may in fact be the result of synkinesis. If this is the case, surgical elevation is not the preferred approach and treatment should focus on the synkinetic activity. Neurotoxins such as Botox and Dysport can provide a temporary fix. Surgical procedures that aim for more permanent improvement also exist but are often unsuccessful. Thank you for watching. For further information, check out our book, Fix My Face, or email info at facialrecovery.com.